All right, I think we can start. Good afternoon. I hope you, hey. <laughs> My name is Julien Stroecker, working at Microsoft. Um, I'm going to try to, so I hope you're there for this session, doing DevOps with uh, DCOS. I'm going to try to share for 45 minutes my journey around DevOps. So I used to uh, work in the DevOps team inside Microsoft for three years now. I mean, I'm still working in this team, um, doing a lot of open source uh, technology, which is great. Microsoft pay me to do Microsoft, uh, to do open source <laughs> technologies. I uh, have a lot of fun and um, I try to stay focused on DevOps practices. Um, and when I'm seeing DevOps practices plus open source, yes, we have like Microsoft products doing, helping people uh, doing uh, DevOps. Maybe you heard about TFS, VSTS and so on. But since I'm really focused on open source technology, I'm playing and having a lot of fun with the opposite, uh, Jenkins. Uh, for example, and other open source technology, which is really great. So I'm going to try to share a few practices. The idea is more challenge during these 45 minutes. I'm going to try to do just demos. Uh, and we're going to try um, to do and uh, implement DevOps practices on a leader applica uh, application, Java application, that uh, I'm using uh, a lot. Um, so I'm, I'm going to explain that, actually. So just the idea of that is 45 minutes doing only demos. And we only code, so let's cross the finger. Let's let's see if it's gonna work. So, quick uh, agenda about that. So, I don't know if you're about ACS. No worries, guys. I'm not here. Yes, working for Microsoft. I have nothing to sell, right? I'm doing only technical stuff. Um, I think I only have one marketing slide working for Microsoft. So I guess it's kind of monetary. No kidding. Uh, I'm just going to explain SES. Maybe you heard about that as the container services. It's just a quick, easy way to deploy like uh, DCOS or Kubernetes or any um, uh, container uh, orchestrator on Azure. Um, so I'm just going to explain that for people maybe never use it. And then we're going to go deep on CI, CD, and a bunch of DevOps practices. Depends the time that we have. I'm going to try to add more and more practices on top of that. <coughs> Make sense? All right. By the way, as you can hear, I'm French, so sometimes uh, people cannot understand me. Don't worry. Just raise your hand and say, hey, can you repeat that? Or maybe if you have questions also, don't hesitate to, to, to ask questions. So yeah, that's the only marketing slide I have. ACS on Azure, Azure Container Services. Um, this is the thing, the only preparation that I made before the presentation is just to deploy a cluster, just a few clicks. We, Microsoft, so we like to click and we like interface uh, using the portal, right? Um, and I deploy, obviously, a DCOS cluster. Um, but you also have the ability to deploy Swarm, Kubernetes. We just announced a new services for people using Microsoft called AKS, which is a Kubernetes managed on Azure. Um, really exciting. And, uh, but that's not the focus today. That's just the thing. I'm going to show you right at um, this, this piece on the portal how I, I, I did that. The application I'm going to use today, it's an application called Parts Limited MRP. If you, did you read this book? Who reads it? OK, I really, really encourage you people to read it if you're interested about DevOps practices. And the cool thing about that one is not, a, I'm not going to say a boring book. It's a novel, so it's purely fiction. But it's, it's really fun because they have all the cliche inside in terms of DevOps practices. You know, the dev guys confronting all the time the ops guy and so on and so on. Um, that, that's very really great. And from that, uh, we developed this application called Parts Limited MRP, referencing to the book. Um, this application, so it's public. It's only op using open source technology. So it's Java-based application, using running Tomcat, using MongoDB, and so on. Right? So if you go there on the link on the repo, Microsoft repo, it's kind of a mon monolithic, whoa, mono monolithic application. Um, and what I try and when um, what I try to, to to do here, what I'm going to try to do actually, is to split it in kind of micro services because it's trendy here. So we're going to try to do micro services from that, and then deploy on DCOS and do DevOps practices around that, right? <coughs> so this is what I said. We're going to try to. 
do DevOps, DevOps everywhere, right, during this application. So obviously a CI, which is like pretty much the base about um, DevOps practices, continuously integrating new features and make sure that it's built and works all the time. Then uh, I put that here, another thing on Azure called ACR, Azure Container Registry. I don't know if you heard about that one. It's just basically the ability to have a private registry for Docker image, uh, pass base, right? On Azure, it's really simple. Again, a few clicks and boom, you have, you have it. Uh, what I'm going to try to do at the beginning is just use GitHub, and then if you have time, we can implement that piece. It's really, really straightforward. You're going to see that. Then we're going to do CD, so try to deploy continuously on a cluster using VAMP. Did you already hear about that one, VAMP? OK. It's pretty awesome, actually. I discovered that, that one from the universe. So I just click sometimes randomly. I'm going to the universe and catalog, click, deploy, see what's going on. So that was the, the one I just discovered. I think it's really awesome, especially when you start with DCOS and Mesos in terms of networking and, and, and so on, especially for the CDPs when you want to do canary testing, a bit testing, and so on. That's really, really cool. So this is what I'm going to try. And since we only have 45 minutes, is going to help me. That tool is going to help me a lot to, to, to achieve that. And if you have time, yeah, telemetry, application insight, um, and so on and so on. So warning, <coughs> it will be a live demo. I'm a huge fan about, uh, of the, uh, the Office. I don't know if you know this series. Um, so let's go. Let's start to have fun. <laughs> All right. So this is Azure. If you're the first time that you see Azure, Azure guys, guys, Azure. Uh, that's the, the, the portal. Um, the cool thing with that, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not going to sell Azure. It's basically, and I'm going to be honest, it's the same thing that we providing the same features that you can have on AWS or Google Cloud, right? Uh, with some extra, for sure, we have differentiation, uh, which means with that, everything that you can do from the portal, you can do through the CLI and so on. Yeah. That's a good question. So the question is, um, the services that I'm going to show you right now, are there availability on all zones, including Germany? Germany is a special one, because Germany, we have a pretty nice story about that. That one is kind of silo uh, for some legal purposes and so on. I'm not sure about that one. I can, I can check later. Maybe Rob, you know, if it's available. No. OK. I'm not sure that ACS is available, because ACS, the services that I introduced at the beginning, Basically, SES is just a bunch of VM behind the scenes. So I would say yes, because it's just VMs with best practices installation of the framework, so DCOS in that case. But uh, let me confirm that maybe after the conference. Um, so yeah, that's the portal. Um, what, I, what I did, like I said, I already that, done that piece because it can take like between 10 and 15 minutes to deploy the, the services. I do a search for SES, right, Azure Container Services. And I click on that guy here, create. And then it's going to ask me, remember Microsoft, we like to do have some interface, click, and so on. Uh, here it's going to ask me the name, how many nodes I want, how many masters, uh, the size of the VMs that I want, how many CPUs, and so on. It's really, really straightforward. Like, let's, I would say 10 questions, and then it's going to deploy everything, right? So I already did that. And also at that step, he asked me for the uh, public key, right, the SSH key that I want to uh, deploy my, on my cluster. And after that, when it's done, this is what I have. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. Like I said, it's just a bunch of resources on Azure, VM storage, networking, and so on and so on. Um, and when it's done, actually, the way that it works on Azure, you just have to do a SSH tunnel on the master, right? So I'm initi initiating a SSH connection on my master using my private key and doing a forwarding port on port 80. And when it's done, I can reach the portal, the DCOS portal from the localhost because I'm forwarding the port 80 of my master on my localhost. Make sense? So it's really straightforward. Like I said, it's a basic, basic cluster. I'm running five nodes on that one here, five nodes and one, uh, five private nodes and one on the public um, <coughs> region, so our six node totally, one master, 
And what we're going to do first, um, just to make sure that everything works, and because we're going to use it, we're going to deploy Jenkins. Right? So I'm going to use Jenkins as is. No configuration. Don't need persistent storage, storage and so on, just for the demos, right? Uh, so we're going to wait that, that piece to deploy. In the meantime, I'm going to show you the code that I'm going to use. So the link that I paste on the, on the slide at the beginning is the repo by itself with all the code, like the kind of the monolithic application by itself. What I also did before that, uh, before that sorry, I split it in two services. Like I said, we're going to try to do microservices. We're going to fake that, just two services. One for the web front end, running Tomcat and just my, it's not Angular, but it's a whole framework, JavaScript framework. You're going to see my uh, UI skills, really beautiful UI skills. But it's just a way to handle some JavaScript, right? Print some screen. And then the API. For the API, I'm using Spring from Java. Um, that's my framework. So I created two different repo, right? The client one and the other one. I also have the database Mongo. That one is just a basic uh, repo. Basically, it's just a Docker file, right? And I'm injecting data on that one, feeding, like mocking the database. When you run the Docker file, uh, it's going to inject like fake data on that, just to have data for the demo, right? But for that one, the Mongo, which is not the really goal of this talk, it just lets a stateful piece. I'm going to still run that on DCOS, right? But maybe there's a more better solution in terms of storage, and maybe we're going to use a pass solution and so on. But just for the demo again, it's just a basic uh, thing. We're going to pretend that it's run, and that's not the focus right now. We're just going to focus on the client and the API piece. Make sense? So that's the client repository. I'm going to explain that after that. <coughs> and that's the other one. So back to the cluster here. Still deploying, which is weird. Don't like that. Oh, it's running. So I have my Jenkins installed. This is something that I like from DCOS. I'm using like a lot of Kubernetes and also Swarm, which is I'm really focused on containers, uh, containers technologies. And what I like with DCOS, it's really, really simple to start, right? Just push a button, and at least you can do proof of concept, and, and it's really, really easy to, to start, right? So we have a basic Jenkins instance here. Like, like you saw that, no thing fancy, no custom configuration on that, right? Like I said, we're going to use VAMP. So for VAMP, if you go on the official documentation, vamp.io, and I think it's not, not on supports, on developers, documentation, installation, let me zoom, and go on DCOS here. So it's going to just explain how you can install VAMP. Or if you want, they also have a package, a universe uh, Universe package here. If you do a search for VAMP, you can also VAMP, uh, install VAMP from there. I prefer to install from the official documentation. So b basically, what the documentation said, you have to run Elasticsearch. So it just gave you <coughs> the marathon uh, JSON file here. And then you can install VAMP from another JSON file. Uh, so what I did, I already prepared that. So that's a repo with all my script, all my uh, what I'm going to do during this demo. So if people want to repose that at home, you're more than welcome to, to go on, on this repo. I'm going to share the link after that. So inside the VAMP folder, I have just copy and paste from the official documentation, the Elasticsearch piece, and the VAMP piece, right? So what I'm going to do from the CLI here, I have the DCOS CLI install. I think. Uh, it should be already set up, like uh, authentication and so on and so on. What I'm going to do, I'm going <coughs> to, oops, sorry. I'm going to install the Elastic Search piece. Uh, oh, I changed the folder. Add, oops, add, Mesoscan, vamp, uh, okay. I'm going to push that. So it create the deployment. So just to quickly make sure we have the services deploying. And what are we going to do? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to wait that one to run. But we're going to prepare here. Oh, actually, also, the thing uh, on VAMP, it told you that 
you have the ability to store like, artifacts on them. So if you want to have the persistent uh, state for the artifacts, you have to use MySQL database, or I think they're supporting a few of them, like MySQL, Postgre, and Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, what I'm going to do also, it's supposed to work without it, but I'm not going to take a chance. Like I said, it's a live demo, so I prefer to prepare everything. I'm going to also install MySQL, and let's be crazy, use the default one from the universe again. So that one's supposed to run. Okay, so it's running here. That one is staging. All right, so we're going to let him deploy. Uh, actually, okay, it's running. I want to start the deployment on VAMP also. And I'm going to explain also the code, uh, the pipeline, the Jenkins pipeline that I'm going to use. This is also that I, I also something that I prepared before the Jenkins file uh, because it can take a while, but I'm going to explain it. Come on, guys! I think it's running, right? I don't know why he say it's deploying. Yeah, it's running. It's just to have the I think the the L check. So let's deploy Vamp in the meantime. Here it's supposed to create a folder like a group and deploy a bunch of services. Going to deploy Vamp and then like. It's a microservices application, so you have the gateway, you have the, the workflow services, and so on. So we're going to see that uh, after that. OK, in the meantime, let me show you the code for the Jenkins piece. So are you familiar with the pipeline on Jenkins? Yes? No? OK. So if you're using Jen Jenkins, I guess, and I hope so, using the pipeline, which is an awesome feature, actually. Um, we used to have on Jenkins like the freestyle job. I think the name is correct for what it was, right? <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, if you have like different bunch of actions on your pipeline, like running CI te uh, running tests, running unit testing, integration tests, depends of the way that you want to deploy. It was different bunch of freestyle project and one column, the, uh, the other one, and so on, so on. And then since the Jenkins 2.0, I think, they implement this thing called the pipeline. I like to call that like the CI as code, if I can say that, uh, the ability to store the CI pipeline inside the file. So if using Travis, for example, uh, Circle CI and all those fancy guys, cloud-based, right? This is also the way that it works, which is very great. You just store everything, all the pipeline in your YAML file inside your repo. And then when you're going to push, it's going to run this file and run step by step what you want to run, right? Because at the end, a CI tool is just an orchestrator tool. You can say, OK, run this script first, and then that one, that one, that one. Make sense? So this is exactly how the pipeline works on Jenkins. So if I start with the API here, I don't know if you can see, yeah. Uh, so that's the code, right? I can show you. Not going to lie here. If you go on source, uh, main, because it's in Java, that means a lot of files everywhere. <laughs> uh, I have my controllers, model, and so on. So that's really, really Java file. Uh, and if I'm going back to the root here, I have this guy called the Jenkins files. And here, what I'm going to do, uh, first, I'm going to ask Jenkins to clone the repo on my node, right? Then um, I'm going to run the build. So I'm going to build the Docker image. I'm going to push this image to, uh, I'm using the public repository here. But if you have time, we can change to a private one. So I'm going to build and push the code. As you can see here, I'm not doing any tests. Good practices, right? <laughs> Uh, but I will say maybe that one step before I want to run the unit test, right? Uh, since I'm using Gradle uh, to build, this is what I'm going to do. Um, this is what I'm doing inside, actually. Uh, to build application, I have to run the Gradle uh, build packaging stuff, right? But I also have a switch for test. But I'm not doing it here. Uh, so I'm building, pushing, and then here I'm doing a bunch of magic. <laughs> uh, I'm doing sync command. You can understand why. Uh, it's involved vamp at the end, and when I, basically I'm preparing some config file, and when it's done, I'm going to push those config files to the API of vamp, right? So I'm also preparing some um, other practices in terms of DevOps practices here. What we're going to do? We're going to do A/B testing. I don't know if you're familiar with that or canary testing. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to push uh, a code. So let's say my V1 code, and then um, let's say we have a high velocity. Maybe we're going to push 10 times per day which could be great. We are like Netflix or whatever. And let's say we're going to go crazy, push 
20, 30 times a day my, my microservices. So I want to be able to do A-B testing. So maybe not go to go completely crazy and say, I have a new version now. Let's already like 100% of my client or customer on this new version and see what's going on. Maybe it's not a good practice. So what we're going to do, we're going to easily smoothly switch. So we're going to keep the whole version. If I can say the current version, we're going to deploy the vNext version, so the version 2. And thanks to VAMP, we're going to do load balancing. So we're going to do A-B testing, actually and smoothly redirect 20% of the traffic on the new services, do some telemetry, let's wait, and then apply to do 50-50, 70-30, and then 100% on my new deployment. Make sense? Right? Again, it's just for demo. Maybe in production you want to do smoothly. Here, I'm what I'm going to do, I'm going to deploy, do 50-50, and then 100. Boom. <laughs> no time for go smoothly, but again, it's just, uh, it just uh, for the demo that I'm doing that. Right? So let's go back to DCOS here. So like I said, when you install VAMP, because it's the way that it's code is to microservices also, it deploys a bunch of <coughs> microservices, but the most important one is the VAMP dashboard, is that guy. So this is VAMP, actually. What I'm going to show you here, it's really like the straightforward uh, usage of VAMP. Actually, I'm going to use the API. But they have a bunch of resources. Uh, they have their own features, if I can say that. Uh, the blueprints, the breeds. So you can handle a lot of practices using only VAMPs. Uh, but me, what I'm going to do, I'm going I'm to use the API. I'm just going to call, as, we, as they call that, a deployment. So I'm going to pass my new deployment all the time. So that's the seed command that you can see in the pipeline. This is what I'm going to show you. So before that, what I can do, I can show you the basic hello world in VAMP, because I think it's interesting to know that. So. <coughs> What I'm going to do here, I'm going to add a deployment, so it's YAML base. So I'm going to say here, get, I don't know if you can see in the back, that's correct. You want me to maybe to zoom? Is it good? Yeah? OK. So I'm going to name my deployment. I'm going to create, like, they call that the cluster, so call hello world. Um, I'm going to, they call that the breed. So a breed is, let's say, Docker image, in my case. You can reuse this breed for multiple deployments. Like I said, the way that it is deployed is really smart when you're using that. It's going to like split everything. It's like, like the gateway. They call it the, the gateway. So the way that you want to access, access the containers, it's called that the gateway. The breed, it's like basically the artifacts that you want to deploy, and so on and so on. Again, the documentation is really well done. Um, but anyway, here I'm going to deploy my Hello World deployment. The deployable, which is the Docker image I want to deploy, it's geostroker-webdebug. That's my own. Uh, way to do my hello world, let's say that. And then <coughs> I'm going to scale to those resources. And that guy is going to talk to DCOS and Mesos, and it's going to do all the magic for me, right? So I'm going to save that, which means deploy. And also in the meantime, I'm going to deploy, as they call, a gateway. So the gateway on VAMP is just the way to handle the networking and also the A-B testing stuff and so on. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to deploy a new gateway called Hello World. Um, here, I'm going to use that service port inside my DCOS cluster. I'm going to use a virtual host. So I have a custom DNN, uh, DNS name called Julien.Work hosting on GoDaddy. So it's here. On GoDaddy, I'm saying that the Hello-World, I want you to redirect on my virtual IP on Azure because I'm on Azure, right? So when you deploy an SES, you have a bunch of load balancer, virtual IP, and so on on Azure. So I'm going to reach my virtual IP for my node, my agent, my agent, right? And then VAMP's going to handle that. So basically, that's kind of the Marathon LB piece, right? And I'm going to route that one to Hello World, Hello World. So you remember on the deployment, I have the name of the deployment, the cluster name. The web port, and so it's kind of you have the indentation and so on. Again, it's really well explained on on, on the documentation. <coughs> and I'm going to I'm going to redirect everything 100% of the traffic on that deployment. Make sense? So I'm going to save that guy here. So my deployment here is deploy. So if you go back on DCOS here, so you can see that I, my deployment dash hello world whatever is running here. And let's see my gateway here also running with that virtual host. So actually, let's try that guy here. And that's my lower. 
right? So that's the basic, basic hello world running on them. Awesome GIF, right? Any question on that? No? OK, I'm done. Thank you. No? OK. Let me check the time. OK. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove my gateway. I'm going to remove my deployment. Supposed to, OK. Because I like DevOps, that means I like to automate everything, right? So now what I did manually, let's say that, copy and paste, new, et cetera, et cetera, what I want to do is kind of the same way, the same thing using Jenkins. <coughs> On top of them, they have the API, so this is what I'm going to use. And this is what I have at the bottom of my Jenkins files. So still, I didn't show you yet the ugly YAML thing that I'm doing here. Not ugly, actually, but kind of. But all the next step, the stage on Jenkins, it's using the VAMP API. I'm using so the, virtual, the internal virtual IP inside my cluster. So this is on the default where VAMP is deployed, using the API for each stuff that I want to do, deployment, gateways, braid, etc., etc. Each feature I'm using inside, I can curl, post, or whatever I want to do uh, using the API. And then I'm passing the YAML file. So the YAML piece that I show you that I paste manually, this is what I'm doing here. This is what I'm playing with on my seed. So let me show you that inside the cluster now. So the first one I'm calling it's PUMRP order deploy.yaml. And uh, I'm doing that twice. You're going to understand why. And then I have a gateway 50 and gateway 100. So, like I said, it's really ugly the way that I'm doing that. When I'm deploying, I'm doing 50-50 between the VNext and the current one, and then 100. You're going to understand that. So basically, I have a few files. So if I'm going back to my source folder, oh no, deploy folder here, this is where I'm hosting my file. So the first one that I'm playing with is that one. So it looks familiar, right? It's kind of the same structure that I use for the Hello World. But here, what I'm doing, I'm going to tag my deployment here. because but not all the time, but it's going to happen that I'm going to have two deployments, right? The VNext one and the current one, because I want to load balance, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this ID tag, and this is the seed that I'm doing in my command line. So I'm going to do version 1, version 2, and then, so that's my first deployment. Let's say I want to redeploy, I'm going to have 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 4 and 5, and so on and so on, right? And this ID tag is the one from Jenkins. So in the Jenkins files, you can call variables, right? Environment variables. So I'm going to call the ID of the build that I'm running right now. Make sense? And then I'm just passing that all the way. So every time uh, for the Docker image, so I'm going to build the Docker image and push with the tag of the build, right? So version 1, gonna, the name of the image is going to be docker build t party limited MRP, <coughs> comma 1, and so on, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to push, and this is the one again I'm going to pull on my cluster. Make sense? So that's the deployment by itself. Uh, something. Uh, also, something here. It's more related about the Docker image by itself, but I'm using a envi one environment variable to the FQDN of the Mongo database. And that's actually a good reminder. I have to deploy the Mongo database. So what I'm going to do, since it's not really the, the focus of the talk, I'm going to deploy my Mongo database manually, because I don't want to do DevOps on that one for now. So it's a basic, basic, like I said, basic deployment. The only thing that I'm calling is my custom image, but like I said, if we can, if we <coughs> you can go on the Docker file, it's uh, calling the official MongoDB uh, image. But what I'm doing differently, I'm just injecting where this start. I'm starting the daemon, injecting like I'm feeding the database with some data, right? This is the only thing that I'm doing, and I'm exposing on the cluster the default port of the Mongo database. And because it's going to be on the PUMRP database folder or group. And the name of the container is also pure MRP database. This is why it's hard coded, I know. But this is why here I'm calling that one. I'm using the internal load balancer, right? 
to reach my database. Make sense? All right. And then comes the gateway. So the 50-50, what I'm doing, still using the tag, right, on my build. I'm redirecting 50% of my traffic on the current version. So this is why you have the pre-tag and the ID tag. This is the two variables I'm using. The pre-tag is the previous version. It's the current version minus one. So if it's, if it's build number 10, it's going to be nine, right? And the ID tag is the current version or the current ID of the build. Make sense? Actually, I'm going to run that right now. You're going to understand. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy the URL of my repo here. And I'm going to go on Jenkins here. So I'm going to create a new item. Like I said, I'm going to use a pipeline project. So I'm going to call that one order API. It's a freestyle uh, pipeline project. <coughs> Sorry. So the only thing that I, can, that I have to do is here I say I want you to grab the pipeline, the no, Jenkins file from this repository. Since it's public, I don't have to provide any credential, right? But if you want to use a private, regi private registry, you can do it. I don't have to change that one because it's the name of the file I'm using. Also, what I did, or what I have to do actually, uh, back on my Jenkins file here, as you can see, so I'm building, but, w but when I'm going to push my image, I need credential, right? It's not anonymous. I cannot push my, uh, the, the image on the Docker Hub like this. So I'm using the credential or uh, vault from Jenkins. So I'm going to create, I have to do that before. I'm going to create a credential called Docker Hub. So to do that, go on credential sections. I'm going to say here, I want to add credentials. I just have to use the same ID. So this is my Docker Hub username. And that way, Jenkins is going to be able to grab and use those key, right? So now I have that guy. I'm going to start the build. So the way that Jenkins uh, works on Mesos is pretty awesome. You have the master running on containers, and every time you're going to launch a new build, it's going to trigger a Mesos task, run the build inside it. Um, so that's why the first time is going to take a while, because it's going to boot, or not boot, but create the containers, pull the, for the first time the Jenkins slave image, and then run everything. So build the image, pull the official Tomcat image. You can, if you're curious, you can go on the repo, see my Docker file. Again, it's from the official uh, image, so that one is Tomcat or GTK, I don't remember. Uh, so it's pretty heavy because it's Java. It's going to download everything, build my image, push to the Docker uh, Hub. And then inside my pipeline, I also add some validation step uh, here because I'm asking the uh, input. So I don't want to do everything like one shot, 50, 50, 100, and so on. It's going to ask me before. Are you ready to do the next step? So it's going to deploy at that uh, until that stage. So it's going to deploy to my cluster. And the cool thing with the gateway that I show you, actually, you're going to see that it's going to deploy my deployment. So it's going to deploy my API in that case. And it's going to create the gateway. But the gateway is not going to touch the, touch the gateway until it's going to ask me, do you approve the deployment? That means the gateway still redirects to the old deployment, right? When well, I'm going to say, OK, I'm ready to have the 50-50, then he's going to do the 50-50 load balancing, right? And so on for the 100. I can still roll back if I want. So it's supposed to build. So also in the meantime, I'm going to deploy my, yeah. So that one's going to take a while because, again, you have to pull for the first time the official, not a while, I, I would say like two minutes, but still. What I can do, I can create another pipeline for my client, right? So I'm going to call oops, client here. So the client here is not the same repo. It's that one. Oops. Same process from Git. 
and save. And it's a bit crazy. I think I clicked. Yeah, click. Okay. Let's see if at least we have logs. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. And then he's also building the image, the image inside the container, right? Maybe not the best practices, but like I said, it's demo, demo wise. So, any question at that step? <coughs> no. Okay. Okay. So the build is done. Now it's pushing. So what I can do, just to show you here, you can see, I don't know if you can see well, but he pushed with the tag one, because again, he's reading like the environment variable from Jenkins, right? It's the first deployment here. So it's going to be one. So because I need two deployments to do load balancing, right? What I'm going to do after, right after that, I'm going to kick off the, the another release to have one and two, because in that way, we're not going to have the two deployments to do the 50-50 um, deployment, right? So the first one is kind of faked, but in production, you're supposed to have the old version or the current version and then push the new version all the time, right? Because here, I start from scratch. I'm going to need at least two deployments. So this is why I'm going to wait that one to be done. So it pushed, and I'm going to so let's forget about that. You didn't see that one, right? OK. And we're going to rebuild the new one. OK, perfect. So what he did, he just deployed the first one with the tag number one. Like I said, we're going to need at least two to have the 50-50 deployment, right? So he's deploying the first image, the order. He created the gateway with the URL that I want, the virtual host. So this is also something that I specify in the gateway, if you remember, like the hello world, right? So here, what I'm going to use is api.pomrp.julian.walk, like my custom DNS name, but you can use your own. And for the client, for the web front end, it's going to be the same thing, but without the API in the front, right? So I'm exposing the API publicly and also the web front end on that case. So what I'm going to do, I'm supposed to be able to do that, actually, just to make sure that it works. So yeah, if I'm going on that route, the dash orders is going to reach the, just a good way to try and test the connection between the API and the MongoDB inside my cluster, right? So I, I, have the, I know that this route, orders, I have another one for codes. You can understand why, because the application by itself, it's like kind of e-commerce solution, really light. Uh, so basically, I'm creating new orders in my database, I can delete, I can update, and so on, right? Uh, reaching the MongoDB database. So that's the API. The good thing, it's accessible from the outside. That's great. So let's see where the front end now is. Same thing. So he's asking me for that thing here. So it's deploy, and again, I'm going to kick a new one. Perfect. So same thing here. The client should be PUMRP. Good, good demo. Or maybe because the route is not. be okay. Come on. Okay, what I missed. Client. Oh. No, should be okay. Let's try with uh, another the awesome Safari border. Yeah, J 
just the cache, I guess. Anyway, so just to show you the UI. So that's, like I said, awesome UI skill from Julien. Uh, that's my application. I have something on the left here. You can see I, have, uh, I can reach the dealers, I can do codes. You can see I have uh, some font issues. <laughs> but uh, it's supposed to be add, edit, remove, like the basic CRUD stuff, right? Uh, and everything is back on the Mongo database, right? As you can see, I have dealers, code, orders, delivery, and some settings. Settings have nothing. So I open for pull requests if you want. <laughs> Uh, and behind the scene again is switching my API, right? So now if I'm on the DevOps workflow, maybe it could be fun to, on the process, I would say, okay, I'm gonna add a new route because I want to have a new feature. So I want to be able to add, for example, a way to browse the catalog, for example, see all the things that we can order online. So I would say maybe here I want a new button called catalog and then it's gonna be the same way that I code the, the, the application, it's gonna reach a special route on, on my API. I can do a get, a pause, delete, everything, right? And that means I'm gonna need a new space on my database to store everything, a new route, and a new button on my web, right? So let's do that. Actually, let's uncomment the code. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay to do live demo, but not live code. No, come on. So on the order API, so let's say on the, again, the database is not the focus for this talk, let's say on the order API, um, what I'm gonna do on the code is gonna be really, really ugly because I'm gonna do that to the GitHub web uh, interface. So I have this um, catalog controller here. So as you can see, it's com uh, commented. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna edit this file, and yeah, beautiful, right? And let's say add catalog route. So this is what I'm gonna do, straight to the master, boom. Really DevOps. So in the best practices, yeah, branch strategy, branch policies, um, even on my, um, on my Jenkins, uh, I didn't implement that, but you also have the ability to trigger from new pull requests or new commits. So I'm gonna just do, and continue that guy here. And then we're gonna build a new, okay. So let's say we have the, wow, we have the CI implemented and the, the, the CD, so that guy is gonna kick off uh, automatically, right? Because it detects a new commit on my repo. So again, it's going to build a new code, push, and this is where it's going to be interesting, right? Sends to the gateway and everything. Uh, here I'm doing that only on the API, right? So that means on the UI, no impact on the U UI. I'm just going to add a route. So it's a good way to test behind the scene, right? So that means I'm going to be able to do API.p, I mean the FUDN, WAC catalog. This is what I implemented. Again, nothing on the UI, that means the end user not supposed to know that, not supposed to use this feature, but it's a good way to smoothly um, deploy uh, my new version of my code, right? So also in the meantime, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna also implement on the web the same thing. So it's, uh, okay, oh, it's here. So on the web, same thing. I'm gonna uncomment that guy here, which is the button for the catalog. And also here, this is the button on the, on the, on the left. And that guy is gonna read and use the uh, API, right? So catalog. Again, straight to the master, that'd be crazy. All right. So uh, in the meantime, what I can do, and also that's the beauty of the gateway. I can start to say here, so let me finish that piece. I can start to build, deploy on VAMP. I mean, deploy and run that on my DCOS cluster. And still, because I'm using the gateway, you remember when he asked me, are you sure to go on the next step, right? Uh, we want to confirm that. This is the way it's gonna actually redirect my end user. Before that, there is no impact for the user since it's a load balancing stuff, 
right? I'm deploying and running my both application, the current one and the new one that I just modified here. That means I can still do internal uh, tests if I want. On VAMP, I didn't talk about that, but you can do canary testing and flag, for example, adding some HTTP headers and say only the, I don't know, those user with this IP or this user agent can reach my uh, application, which is very great to do canary testing. So a bunch of different ways to, to test and try. So let's try that here with the other API. So it's deployed in the cluster. That means here on the deployment, I have PU MRP order two and the three, which is still deploying, but it's going to be deployed. And my gateway behind that, it's that one, the PU MRP API, and that one, it's redirecting 100% of the time here, as you can see, uh, sorry, here. I don't know if you can see well, but only on the two, right? When I'm going to push the button to go ahead, deploy, it's going to switch the two and the three and redirect 50-50 on both of them. And this is where you have the, I mean, the impact for the user, right? But before that, just to make sure that I don't have the catalog route, what I can do here, actually, I'm going to use Postman because Postman, I think I have no cache with Postman. Um, Yep, here. So if I'm doing ping, that's a, a root that I code. I know that I have data, so just to make sure. So catalog, I have no found, so I have a 404 euro uh, written by Spring. So now let's say I want to do the 50-50 deployment. Let's do, proce let's do proceed, so it's done. So if I'm going back to gateway here on my API, as you can see, you have 50-50. That means here, without any logic, OK, I, I should have 50-50. So I have data and 50% of the time. And again, the cool thing here, I'm not impacting my user because we didn't touch to the client here, the, the, the web, right? So if I'm refreshing that guy here, I have nothing here until I'm pressing the button again, right? So let's do that for, and let's do move full, actually. Let's do 100% of the VNX or the new version to implement the API. And the last step here is just to make sure that remove the version 2 for the previous version of my VAMP to don't have like 10 different uh, deployments on my cluster running at the same time. And go back to the client here. Here, let's say, OK, I want a 50-50. Same concept, right? The gateway, 50-50. So if I'm refreshing here, I know that I have to do clear story here. Let's try. Oh, I have the catalog here. So still a bug here. And I have my catalog here. And again, that one, because the API is 100% of the time redirect to my API, it's supposed to work. But again, user agent, custom flags, kind of testing could be implemented here. That means we can do real, real, real DevOps fun stuff here. And again, let's do, I'm agree with that. Let's do proceed here. And it's going to switch 100% of my traffic on my gateways. So no time left, unfortunately. Um, what I can offer you, it's if you're going to download my slide, uh, I don't know if it's too late to update it. But anyway, uh, if you go on my repo, I'm going to just show you that here on my GitHub repository. I'm going to create, like I already did that, actually. This repo called DemoConf, uh, you should be able to see all the if you want to reproduce the demo, all the code is open source. If you want to retry at home and so on. And I'm going to also uh, paste the video. Uh, I'm going to record the video with that, plus the different practices, like the telemetry. I didn't talk about that, and so on and so on, if you want to go further on that. So sorry, what? we don't have to have a question, I guess. But if you have a question, let me know. I mean, I'm going to be around. I'm going to have another talk tomorrow about auto scaling uh, on DCOS and Mesos. Thank you very much for your time.